Hey, hey, YouTube, welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin, but you knew that, didn't you? Well, not very long ago, I created a video called A Pipe, Some Bourbon, and Rambling. And in that video, I expressed my recent lull in ideas for future videos. And I asked for your help. Um, video ideas and a pretty new subscriber to my channel recommended a uh, topic for a video called Pipes 101 and I thought you know that would be great back when my channel used to be called TR Puffin Stuff uh, and most of my videos were about pipes I did a video similar to that, but when I changed my format from specifically pipe videos to more general broad outdoor videos, um, I got rid of or deleted most of those pipe videos. So here we go, Pipes 101. Now disclaimer, I am not a pipe expert. Okay, I've been smoking pipes for a number of years. Uh, I had to put it away for a while, you know, during the cancer time and all that stuff. Picked it up, picked up the hobby again, and uh, because I love it. So I would thought I would take uh, the advice of my uh, new subscriber and, and do a video on Pipe Smoking 101. There are so many things to talk about, but I'm just going to stick with the basics and talk about the basic things that you need if you're wanting to get into pipe smoking. Uh, I'll go over the different supplies and things that you will need, emphasizing that you don't have to go out and spend a fortune. You can easily but that's not necessary. You don't have to spend a fortune or spend a lot of money to enjoy pipe smoking. Pipe smoking takes a certain caress and a certain level of skill as opposed to just lighting a cigar or lighting a cigarette uh, there's a little bit more involved in it, so that's what I'm going to go over. But uh, first, let's talk about the things that you're going to need, all right? First and foremost, of course, you're going to need a pipe. The pipe that I'm going to be using today for my demonstration is a Mr. Brog. Okay, it's a very good smoking pipe. And again, it's not one that'll break the bank. I believe this is in the $25 to $30 price range. Now, of course, you could spend hundreds of dollars on a pipe. I wouldn't recommend that if you're just getting into it. Start with something like this. Like I say, it's a good smoking pipe. I still enjoy it. And it was between $25 and $30 if memory serves correctly. Another thing that you might want to look into are these little rubber tips here. You can buy these in bulk in groups of 10 or if you have a local tobacco merchant brick and mortar store a lot of times they'll have them where you can just buy individually. They're only about a dollar a piece but it's just a little soft rubber. What it does is it protects the stem from marks that your teeth will make and it makes it easier on the stem and your teeth and it's more comfortable for gripping the pipe if you want to grip the pipe without constantly holding on to it so these are great little investments to add other things that you'll need are something to rest your pipe on. It could be 
a little plastic pipe stand like this where the pipe rests right in there. It could be something a little bit more elaborate like this wooden one again that you rest your pipe on put it on a table or wherever you're smoking so that when you're not smoking it at the time you can just rest it rest it on there or it could be something that you made like I make these out of old belts it's just a strip of leather tied with a strip of a piece of leather and again you can just rest your pipe right in there so that way when you put your pipe down it doesn't roll over doesn't fall you don't have to worry about trying to balance it on anything having a stand to put your pipe in while you're smoking it or to store it if you're gonna have multiple pipes I would recommend something like this a pipe stand now this one holds six pipes it's a circle it also has a jar in the middle where you can keep tobacco and I keep in there what I call my bits and pieces and uh, little scraps if I have just a little bit of leftover out of one of my jars of tobacco if I have just a little bit remaining not enough for a whole bowl I'll put that in there and mix it and you'd be surprised how good that taste or you can get something like this to hang on your wall to keep your pipes in and it has a drawer so you can keep other things filters and pipe cleaners things like that sometimes you can have a pipe that stands by itself at the flat bottom this is another Mr. Brog pipe and it just sits by itself. How cool. It's a church warden. So yeah, you need a way to store your pipes. You just don't want your pipes rolling around on a table or anything like that, getting messed up. Or if you're traveling, get yourself a, a pipe pouch. This is a pouch that I've talked about many times over the six seven or eight years that I've had it made by legendary Saxon leather you can check them out on Etsy that's legendary Saxon inside of it it has a pouch where I can keep uh, a tamper which I'm going to talk about in a minute I can keep a lighter in there I can put a pipe in there and I can also keep a tobacco pouch where I actually keep the tobacco in so when I'm traveling, if I go camping or hiking, or if I know I'm going to somebody's house that doesn't mind me smoking, if we're going to be outdoors, I'll take this with me. I'll keep it in my Azuko day bag and uh, be ready to go to smoke. Sometimes I'll put a different pipe in there. Now, of course, you have a pipe. We talked about pipe stands and ways to hold your pipes of course you're gonna need a way to light your pipe some people use matches I on occasion will but that's not my preferred method I prefer a lighter and there are tons of different choices of course you know me if you've ever watched any of my videos you know how I am you can't go wrong with the damn big lighter but also, one thing I like are these lighters. These are called clippers. And the good thing about them is they are refillable. But they're very inexpensive. You can get a two-pack of these for less than five bucks. And they got some cool designs on them and stuff like that. One thing that's really cool about these, and I'm going to talk about tampers... A little bit later but the round design of this lighter can also function as a tamper for tamping down your tobacco then of course there's the pipe lighter and what is unique about the pipe lighter is the way it directs the flame so what it does is 
it directs the flame downward into the bowl without you having to hold upside down. So you don't have to hold it upside down like with a big or with one of those clippers and worry about burning your thumb or anything like that. This is also refillable, you know, which is Ronson butane fuel. This is my preferred pipe. I carry this in my front pocket all the time. And, um, God, I gotta stop saying and, um, you will not believe the number of times that I have to edit out and, um, or but, uh, and ums and but uhs. I edit those out so many times in all of my videos. I don't realize I do it until I go to edit a video. And, uh, but, um, see? <laughs> Alright, so we've talked about pipes, we've talked about stands, we've talked about lighters. Let's talk about these things called tampers. What is a tamper? Well, when you're packing your tobacco or putting your tobacco into the pipe and throughout the course of smoking a pipe, the tobacco is going to gradually sink to the bottom of the bowl. As it smokes, it's going to go down. You need something to compress that tobacco or to push it down. That's what a tamper is for. Now, you can buy tools called check tools. I don't have one handy, but basically they look like this. Usually they'll have three components, okay? They'll have the tamper itself, which is just a round, flat end. They'll have a spike or a pick. And then they'll have a scoop for scooping out tobacco, okay? Now this lighter just happens to have all of those tools in it. So after I light my pipe, when I need to relight my pipe, there's my tamper. Damp and then light. But there are a lot of tampers out there. Golf tees make great tampers. Uh, as a golf player myself, I have many times used a golf tee as a tamper. I talked about how these round clippers make good tampers. And again, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can take a piece of wood off of a limb from a tree. You can tell I've used this tamper many times. It's a piece of wood. I've got it flat on that end for tapping the tobacco down. And I've got a slight angle on it here for going around the edge of the bowl to bring the tobacco in. So just a stick is all you need. Again, you don't have to spend a ton of money. One of my favorite tampers was made by a fellow YouTuber, Tamper Tantrum. And this, this one right here. This is the one that I keep in my legendary Saxon tobacco bag. And every time I pull it out in public and use it, I end up handing it to somebody because somebody wants to see it closer up. It's a beautiful work of art. He makes these and does a wonderful job at it. And I think I won this one in a contest that he did. But if you haven't checked out Tamper, Tam Tamper Tantrum, go check him out. He's a great guy, good content. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to use a tamper. But there are other things too that you can have to enhance your pipe smoking. Um, one thing that you'll definitely need are pipe cleaners, okay? And it'll be another video on pipe cleaning, but keeping your pipes clean is, is very important. Other little things are like little things like this, little windshields. And what this is, you just push in on that you can see how it closes in and you can put that on your pipe put that right there on the top that's if it's a very windy day um, and that just kind of helps to keep the tobacco in the bowl for one and it helps when it's very windy conditions 
but as far as tools and things that you need go, that's about it, guys. And like I say, you don't have to spend a ton of money. This lighter wasn't that expensive. Bic lighters are cheap. The clipper lighters are cheap. You can get these little check tools at your local tobacco merchant, your brick and mortar store, or you can get them on Amazon. And again, for less than five bucks. So, once you get everything that you need to enjoy the art and to start smoking, well, of course, you'll need tobacco. Now, I don't know a lot about all of the different types of tobaccos, Virginia's, Latica's, Perique. I know basically there are two categories, general categories, English and aromatic. I would recommend that you try them both. There are so many tobaccos out there, guys. I mean, thousands of different blends and brand names. One thing I prefer, most of the pipes that I have purchased have been purchased from my local brick and mortar tobacco merchant. I prefer to do business with local businesses anytime I can as opposed to the big companies or on the internet. <clears throat> And one thing that's unique about your local tobacco store is a lot of times they will create custom blends of tobacco where they will blend their own brand of tobacco. You can buy tobaccos that come in bags. You can buy tobacco that come in tins like, like this, little metal tins. Um, I usually get, but when I get mine from the tobacco merchant, he just puts them in little Ziploc baggies and then I bring them home and I transport them to these. And I'm not going to go into tobacco, types of tobacco, qualities of tobacco, because that is a whole nother rabbit hole that honestly I'm not qualified to tour you on. So my recommendation. And what I did is I just started trying new tobaccos. Another good thing about the local brick and mortar store, you can go in and say, hey, I'm looking for a tobacco like this. I want a tobacco that's easy to smoke with no tongue bite. It's got a great aroma, so those around me will enjoy it. That has a great taste. What do you recommend? And they will. They will recommend, based on what you've described you're looking for, they'll do it. Do you want something that has a chocolatey or a coffee or a nutty taste? Do you want something that's earthy? Do you want something that's dark, fruity, uh, dry, light? Tell them what you want. They'll recommend something. When you buy tobacco on the internet, you can't do that. You can't smell it. You can't feel it. You don't know what to expect other than the description that's given to you, which can sometimes be misleading. So, my advice on tobacco is do try lots of different tobaccos and find the ones that are your favorite. And then keep trying more. And what you're going to find is you're going to have lots of favorite tobaccos. I'm going to use for this demonstration some French vanilla from my local tobacco merchant. Now, depending on the environment that you're in, packing the pipe or loading the pipe, whatever you want to call it, can happen different ways, okay? For example, if I'm using my legendary Saxon kit and I'm out and about somewhere at someone else's house or wherever I'm gonna load my pipe a little bit differently okay one way that you can load your pipe 
is you have your tobacco pouch. This is where your tobacco is actually in. This is a leather pouch. It zips and it has a rubber lining there. Again, that's to help keep the tobacco fresh. All right. But what I would do, let me grab a pipe. I'm going to grab this little basket pipe here for demonstration purposes. And you've probably seen Sherlock Holmes. If you ever watched any of the old uh, Sherlock Holmes movies with Nigel Bruce and Basil Rathbone, is the one that plays Sherlock Holmes, uh, here's how he usually does it. He'll have a pouch similar to this and he'll just stick the pipe in okay and then using his forefinger uh, he will shove tobacco into the pipe and he will just push it down okay and then he will level it off when it gets full and there you go it's loaded then what he'll do is he'll push it down a little bit, all right? So if you're on the go and you're working out of a tobacco pouch, that's one way to load your pipe. But what I did when my finger was in that pouch and I was packing, I packed that tobacco in a little bit at first. And then I packed in a little bit more and pushed a little bit harder. And then I packed in even more to where it was actually over the top and pushed it in even harder. So you start off light, then you push a little bit harder, and then you really fill it up and push it down and, and push it in tight. Now, one thing I don't do, some people do, but I don't, I never fill my pipe all the way to the very, very top. Because... I don't want to burn the top surface. Now this little pipe has got a unique characteristic right there. It looks like it might be a, a chip, but it's not. It's just a little, that's one, so one thing that's cool about pipes, they're all unique. But by not putting the pack of tobacco where it overflows, I don't burn the brim of the brim or the rim, whatever you want to call it, of the pipe. And, um, see, there I go with the end on. But now the pipe's ready to light. So, if you're using a tobacco pouch, that's one way that you may pack your pipe. Another is to take something like this. I just have this wooden bowl that I use. Some people have little leather, uh, bowls or whatever. Some people will just use a piece of paper. But basically it's something that you want to use to catch your excess tobacco that may fall to the wayside. Okay? So what you do in this situation, so I'm going to have to refocus the camera here. Okay? So bear with me. Alright, so what you would do in a situation where you may be at home is you have a little bowl like this or a little leather patch or just a piece of paper and what you'll do is you'll take out some of your tobacco and put it in the bowl or the container whatever it is or the piece of paper okay and then you'll take your pipe again I'm going to use my little Mr. Brog on this one and what you do is you'll just take a little bit of tobacco and put it in there and just kind of let it fall in. Let uh, gravity or let, let gravity work its way in and let it just fall like that, okay? And I usually will fill it like that. Now at this point you can use your finger to push it in uh, or your thumb or you can take one of your tampers and just ever so lightly, ever so lightly, push it to the bottom. What you want to do is you want to allow some air in there. You don't want to pack it down so tight to where you're not going to get any air through there that's going to give you draw through the stem. 
So just ever so lightly, just the weight of the tamper really will do the work. Then you'll grab some more, fill it up again to the top, maybe a little bit over the top. Okay, and then you're going to take your tamper again, or you can use your finger. And you're going to push down this time, you're going to use some medium pressure. Okay, not really hard. Don't push it too far down there, just a little bit harder. And then you're going to do step three, or the third part. You're going to finish it off. And again, this is going to be over the top. And as you see, some is spilling over. And that's why you want to have your bowl or your little leather box or piece of paper, whatever. And now that you've got that up there where it's kind of overflowing, you want to push down a little bit harder this time. You want it to get it nice and packed there on the top. Okay. And again, I don't overfill my pipes. That's plenty right there. That way, again, when I light, I won't burn the rim or the brim, depending on which one you call it. But now it's nice and packed. Now you can take your excess leftover tobacco and put it back in your container so that you can enjoy it later. Put your top back on there and make sure that it's tight. Store it away till next time. All right, I'm not sure how that camera angle came out because I couldn't really see it, but I, I hope you were able to get the gist of everything on how to load this pipe. And again, there's different techniques. That's just the way I do it. The three-step technique is what it's called, or what I've heard that it's called. But do what, again, feels right to you. After time, you'll get the experience. I don't. So now you're ready to light your pipe. And again, you can use matches are good to use. I just prefer not to use matches. Um, I prefer again this light. Now what you want to do, take your lighter, point it in the direction of the flame. As you're lighting, you are in inhaling, drawing in, okay? That's what's called the first light, or what some people call the char light. Now, what you'll notice is that tobacco has expanded up a little bit higher. Okay? So what you want to do, take your tamper, ever so lightly tamp it back down, and then give it a second light, what's called the true light. And as you're lighting, you want to rotate your flame around. You want to try to light the entire surface, okay? Now your pipe is lit. And you can uh, enjoy it. I always like to enjoy my pipe with a little bit of light jazz music like you hear in the background. I also like to enjoy it with bourbon and coke. Now what you'll find is if you've properly packed your pipe, it's a lot easier to keep lit. So you can take a little pause like I did to just drink some bourbon have a little conversation with your friends and then go back to puffing on the pipe and it's still lit as the aroma fills the room your friends who don't smoke pipes admire how dapper you look and they admire the whole process of you loading the pipe and lighting and tampering and relighting. They're enjoying the aroma, thinking to themselves, I wish I could be that cool.
you'll have people come up to you and say, oh, that reminds me of my grandfather or my father, which is the case with me. Now, what you'll find is that sometimes, and this is normal, the longer you avoid your pipe, the easier it'll be for that pipe to go out. It's just like a fire, okay? When you start a campfire, eventually the wood is going to burn down, the fire is going to go out. Or even if you have plenty of wood, the fire will still dim down. You give it a little bit of stoke, and the fire will build back up. Same is true with a pipe. Sometimes you have to relight. But hey, that's all right. It looks cool, doesn't it? Now you're relit. And you looked quite dapper doing so. Now how you smoke the pipe is up to you. Do what's comfortable. One thing you don't want to do is this. Draw in so hard to keep drawing in like that. What that's going to do is that's going to burn the tobacco faster. And it's going to give you an ashy, bad taste. It's also going to heat up the pipe to where the pipe gets really hot and it's hard to hold. When you properly smoke a pipe, the pipe shouldn't get hot. Maybe just a tad bit warm. And what you're going to have to do, and again, this is just something that looks great while you're in conversation, while you're still talking, just ever so lightly tap that t top layer of burnt tobacco down. And that's going to keep it lit. And if you have to, relight. One thing that's pretty cool that I think, that I've done before, is if I'm talking with someone and I'm trying to get a point across, and I'm smoking a pipe, and I really want that point to be, get, to be made, I'll get to a certain point, and just like in normal conversation, you would have a dramatic pause to let it sink in with them you can during that dramatic pause or to create that dramatic pause do this so yeah talking about that TPS report and filling out that uh, spreadsheet properly here's what I think about that You can take your TPS report and shove it where the sun don't shine. And no, I'm not coming to work on Sunday. <laughs> Dramatic effect. Smoking a pipe is a craft. It's an art form. It's not something that you can do hastily. Nor would you want to or should you. It's a form of relaxation. It's a form of self-expression. And I'm glad to see that the art of pipe smoking is not dead. But I love to watch the old movies where people are smoking the pipes. I watched a movie on television the other day. I can't remember the name of it. Something about Mrs. Peregrine's home for outstanding children or something like that. Correct me in the comments with the correct title. But the first time you meet Mrs. Peregrine in the movie, she opens up the door and she's got a pipe in her hand. Nothing is sexier than a woman smoking a pipe. But anyway, I know there's a lot of other details that I haven't touched on. But those of you who haven't yet tried the art of smoking a pipe, Consider doing so. I think you'll enjoy it.
there's a whole another world of pipes and pipe shapes and what the pipes are made out of and what shape the pipes are and the bowls and the types of stems and then the whole world of different types of tobaccos and Latticas and Virginia Flake and Flake Tobacco and Ribbon Cut. Don't let all of that stuff confuse you. Don't let it prohibit you from trying smoking a pipe. My biggest piece of advice, if you're interested in piping, go to a local brick and mortar pipe or tobacco merchant tell them what your price range is tell them what you're looking for in a tobacco ask for their advice and follow it that's what these guys do for a living they know their stuff I don't recommend spending a lot of money on a pipe up front and then picking a random tobacco off of the internet and buying it you might not like it granted it's not for everyone well I guess I've gone on long enough I hope you enjoy the video I hope it was helpful for some of you I do appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel already I really mean that. I, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please take a second. Hit that subscribe button and then make sure you click the bell. Give me a thumbs up and share this video. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep puffing.